Good morning, everybody. And today we will uh, start a discussion uh, which is related to data structuring. Till date, what we have done is we have just introduced certain constructs of C language and seen how we can do some simple programming using C language. Today we will take a case study of a very simple problem and see how data structuring helps to solve the problem. Uh, so the problem that we will take today is a very uh, ordinary one, but we will see that there are several issues in which we, uh, we, uh, which we shall uh, consider to solve this problem uh, to the best uh, possible uh, way in which we can do it. The problem is to find the maximum and minimum of a set of n integers. That is you are given to read a value n and then read in n integers and what you are supposed to produce as output is the maximum and the minimum value. Now let us see how we go about it. There are various places where you can start analyzing the problem and proceeding to solve it. And traditionally I have seen that most of the people will like to start from the program for which they have written to find the maximum or the program which they have written to find the minimum of n numbers. And using that program, they try and modify that program to find out the maximum and minimum of n integers. This is something that I have seen uh, nearly everybody doing. Whoever has been assigned this problem, has nearly everybody has started to do that way. And then when you consider whether it is the best possible one or not, then several issues come in and the program gets modified to a final stage. We shall see what that program turns out to be and then we shall see whether analyzing it from a previous stage, analyzing it from what we call the initial solution to a problem and generating other possibilities will lead to a better solution or not. So that is what we will see and we will go through this case study today to find the maximum and minimum of n numbers. So let us first see how a program to find the maximum of n numbers looks like and how anybody would very easily modify that program to find the maximum and minimum of n numbers. So let us go back and see how it works. This is the program that we had written to find the maximum of n numbers. If you will recall, this was the program in which we declared integers n max i n number or num. You asked to give the value of n, then you read n, you printed n, then you read in the first number and you initialized it to the variable max. And then in this loop, which starts from here, and ends here, you read in n minus 1 numbers from i equal to 1 to i less than equal to n minus 1 and every time you read in a number, you compared if num is greater than max, then you updated the value of max to num. This uh, was a program to find the maximum of n numbers and this is in order to see how it works and just revise, we will compile it. Suppose you give 6 and you give these numbers, then the maximum is 8. Now how do you modify it to find the maximum and minimum? What you do is, you keep another variable called min, like maximum is the temporary maximum. Similarly, you keep a value variable called min and find out the temporary minimum and you initialize that here and here you compare. So what we do is we declare another variable called min and when you are reading in max, you initialize min to max also. That is the first number is read and initialized to both min and max and here when you read in the new number, what you do is you again compare. if num is less than min, then min is assigned num. So this program should work, isn't it? 
Is that okay? This program should work. That you have declared a new variable min, you have read in this, you have done this, and if num is greater than max, max is made num. If num is less than min, min is made num. And here you have to print both max and min. So I print here uh, min. So, I print max and min. So, let us see how this will run. So, again you give 5 numbers. So, let us run it again. So, this is how it works and it is quite okay. This program is correct, because, uh, but now the question that we will have to ask is, is this program the best or can we write the program, a program which is better than this. In order to answer the question of what is better, you have to analyze uh, what we mean by better. What we mean by better is two things, whether a program a program is said to be better than another program if it runs faster than the other uh, the other program so now how will we make a one program faster than another there are formal methods to understand how a program can be faster than another but looking at this one let us informally see the condition which we can improve very informally if uh, this condition holds true this condition will not hold because if num is greater than max, then num cannot be less than min, because max and min can at most be the same value. Therefore, if we put an else here, then at least if this condition is true, this condition will not be evaluated. And if this condition is false, only then this condition will be evaluated. So, if we modify the program and write an else out here, then obviously, this program is expected to run faster than the previous program by whatever minuscule amount it may be, but still it will run faster than the other program. And obviously, this program is correct because if a number is greater than max, then max is assigned num, you need not update the value of min. Only if the number is not greater than max, then it may be greater and may be less than min, which you may have to so, let us just run this program once. So, this is also a correct program. Which works quite fine in the sense that it is at least better than the previous program in terms of time all other things remaining the same this program runs better than the previous uh, the program which we meant, which we wrote earlier with without this self else the next question which we will answer is is this the best possible program <coughs> or is this how how good is this program is there any other possibility in which uh, we can improve this program and make it better in order to do that we'll have to do some more paper and pencil analysis to see how uh, other programs can be written. Now, let us analyze what we did in that program. The main part of the program consisted of a for loop.
<coughs> which contain if you did a uh, scan f of num and the main part was if num was greater than max, then max was updated to num. Else, if num was less than my min, then min was updated to num. This was the main part of the program. Now, the place where else was not there in that situation for total of n numbers we had to make 2 into n minus 1 comparisons. If this else was not there, because for 1 to n minus 1, we had to make 2 comparisons. And this possible assignment depended on the value of the comparison. And in the worst case situation, we made both the comparisons and we made only one of the assignments. You cannot make both the assignments, you will make only one of the assignments and you will make both the comparisons. Now, let us take this, when we put this else, then we always did not make the 2 into n minus both the comparisons inside the loop. What we did was, if this comparison turned out to be true, we did not make this, but if this turned out to be false, only then we made it. Therefore, what we did was we made something which was less than or equal to the previous one was we made exactly 2 into n minus 1 comparisons and only one assignment. In the other situation we made less than or equal to 2 into 1 n minus 1 comparisons and one assignment. All other things remaining the same, this matter actually dictated the difference between the two programs. Therefore, this program with the else was considered to be better than the other program. But obviously, you can see there exist examples in which even this modified program will make exactly 2 into n minus 1 comparisons. Therefore, in the worst case, both the algorithms are going to make 2 into n minus 1 comparisons. So, in terms of worst case scenario, both the algorithms are going to perform equally. The question is, can we improve this worst case? The point here is, we started with the maximum program and tried to change it a little here and there. As I had mentioned in previous classes, we have to go a little more deeper into the problem and try and examine how <coughs> we have solved the maximum problem itself and whether we could change the problem to solve the maximum, change the algorithm to solve the maximum, so that solving the minimum becomes easier. So, that is what we will see now. So, let us see how we solve the problem of finding the maximum of n numbers. We saw a recursion uh, example in a previous class, I will just bring you another flavor and we will analyze that recursive form a little later in a subsequent class and we will see both of them lead to a very similar scenario. Let us take a set of numbers. Now, what we did was we compared the first two then we compared this, then we compared this, then we compared this, then we compared this and then we compared this. And this is the tentative value of the max variable which propagated through. This is how we worked it out. We could have also worked it out 
in another way we could have compared these two 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 and we could have compared these two uh, sorry i made a mistake here this should be 10 so this should be 10 and this should be 10 so we could have done it this way also and we could have done it in many other ways and do you know can you tell me what this looks like what does this look like and what does this look like this looks like a fixture of a knockout tournament and actually it's just a knockout tournament you're just knocking somebody out by a mecha mechanism of comparison and any way you fix up this knockout tournament you are going to get back the winner and whatever way we do it we are going to get the maximum by this knockout tournament mechanism so let's have let's see we can have various tournaments to obtain the maximum of n numbers and the question is why did we choose this tournament and not any other one so let's take uh, two solutions side by side and let's take two tournaments to find the maximum of a set of numbers now a very interesting thing about such tournaments is that to declare the winner of a tournament of n players you must necessarily see these are the players and these are the matches and the results of the matches isn't it these are the matches which are played to find out the winner these are the matches which are played to find out the winner and in any such tournament structure to determine the winner of n players you need to have exactly n minus 1 matches so n minus 1 matches are necessary and sufficient to find a winner in a tournament of n players <coughs> so whichever way you set up the tournament you are going to require n minus 1 comparisons to find the maximum of n number and that is why doing it this way or doing it any other way is equivalent to us and you can easily prove that if you do not have n minus 1 comparison that is you take less than that there are situations in which you are not going to find the maximum value but if so finding out the maximum of n numbers we took the easy way out and we did it this way because it made programming easier and it was possibly the most efficient way in which you can find the maximum of n numbers because you just cannot reduce the number of steps but since we are finding the maximum as well as the minimum of n numbers we must see whether another tournament would have been easier because during that tournament we could have possibly found the minimum faster than the maximum because what we are doing here here we are in in a tournament like this we are finding the maximum and carrying the minimum so we are carrying the minimum here 4 we are carrying the minimum here 4 and we are carrying the minimum here 3 and this is how we found out the minimum also and we required 2 n minus 2 into n minus 1 matches or comparisons in the worst case scenario the question is when finding the maximum can you have some other way to find out the minimum can you give a deeper thought into the problem 
in which you can obtain a solution to find out the minimum. Can you tell me? Look, the maximum is that person who has won everything. The minimum is that person who will lose everything. So now 4 and 5, 4 has lost to 5. So 4 must be there to compare. Now 5 has won. So if 5 has won even a single match, 5 cannot be among the minimum. 6 has won, 3 has lost. So you need to compare between 4 and 3 only and that is what we did around here. Now look at it this point, here 4 and 6 were compared, so 4 lost and 5 and 3 were compared and 3 lost. Here 5 and 6 were compared and 5 lost, but this fellow will not participate in becoming the minimum because he has won at least one match. So the minimum will be among those people who have lost their first match. It has to be among those people who have lost their first match. So when finding the maximum through a tournament, you have the winner will have to defeat everybody in some way or the other. But the minimum can be found among the losers who have lost their first match only. And if you could minimize this set, if you could set up a tournament which minimizes the set of losers in the first match, then only among those losers you will find out the minimum. So that is how you could solve the minimum more efficiently. So that is the insight that we will use to solve the maximum and the minimum of n numbers. So we make three very simple observations. <coughs> the number of comparisons to find max is n minus 1. That is the first observation that we have made. The second is the minimum can be found by comparing between those numbers who have lost their in their first comparison in the tournament. And in order to make the algorithm more efficient, the above set of numbers, the set means the set of numbers who have lost in their first comparison in the tournament is to be minimized to make the algorithm more efficient. So you cannot make less than n minus 1 comparisons to find max, that is fine. But you could do something to find minimum more efficiently. So let us see what we can do here. Let us set up two possible tournaments. One is the standard one which we have used where here these are the losers in their first comparison and here these are the losers in their first comparison. Does that give you any idea of how to set up the tournament so that the loser set of the first comparison is reduced? Can the loser set of the first compare in the first comparison be less than n by 2? The loser set in the first comparison can never be less than n by 2 because you will have to play them at least 2 2 in order to for somebody to lose. So if we want to minimize the loser set of the first comparison, we must have a tournament in which they are play pairwise first. So you make them play pairwise and once they play pairwise, you declare the winners and the losers and among the winners you can find the maximum and among the losers you can find the minimum. Let us see. Suppose we have 8, 1, 5, 7, 9 and 2. We compare them pairwise. The winners are 8 here, 7 here and 9 here. And this, these are used to declare the winner and set up, continue the tournament this side. And what you can do is, you can have another tournament between the losers in the reverse direction.
sorry this will be 1 and declare the minimum. So, the solution set for min will be least. I am just giving an informal argument, you can just sit down and prove it, it will not take much time. If pairwise comparison is done, it will be least in other situations also, but at least if pairwise comparison is done, it is definitely going to be least. And therefore, how many comparisons are you going to make? Here you are going to make, let us say if n is even, then in the first round pairwise we are going to make n by 2 comparisons to declare the first round winners and losers. And then among this we have to declare the winner that is maximum of n by 2 numbers, maximum of n numbers is n minus 1. So, maximum of n by 2 numbers is this. These are the number of comparisons, the rest remaining same. The minimum of n by 2 numbers, again this. This is the first round pairwise comparison. This is the maximum among the winners, this is the max minimum among the losers. To find the maximum among n numbers, you required n minus 1 comparisons. Therefore, to find the maximum among n by 2 numbers, you will require n by 2 minus 1. Similarly, to find the minimum among n by 2 numbers, you will require n by 2 minus 1. And you end up requiring 3 by 2 n minus 2. This is for even. For odd, you can take the case out and uh, it will work similarly. For odd, what you do is, you leave one number out and do it for the even case and then compare this new number, the last number with both the maximum and the minimum. That way in the odd scenario, if odd, if n is odd, then for the even part you will require this and one, the last one will have to be compared with both the maximum and the minimum. So, these two will cancel out and for odd you will require this. So, both of them are anyway less than the number which you had before. Therefore, if you work out the algorithm this way, you are bound to get a solution which is much better than the previous scenario. This is the point which I wish to stress. The point was where did you start from? The previous algorithm which we discussed, we started from the code of the maximum of n numbers. That is the final algorithm of the maximum of n numbers and we tried to improve that. Whereas, in the second case, we went deeper into how the maximum of n numbers was solved and we built up a conceptual structure in terms of whatever we called it a tournament or a game or something. And we had this structure of that is this was the way in which the problem was solved and these were the alternatives in which the problem could have been solved in an equivalent fashion. And then we saw that if we took an alternative approach, then finding the minimum of n numbers would have been easier. This is the heart of problem solving, structuring of information, looking deeper into the problem and organizing your data conceptually. This is conceptual data structuring and this we will see will be converted to your program. So, if we start from a program which is the final algorithm, we are going to lead somewhere which is not possibly the best. Though I will not go into it, you can prove that there can be no algorithm which can take less than so many comparisons if comparisons is the only measure of solving, but we will not go into that presently. So, the second is that now we have got our conceptual data structuring, our conceptual algorithm we have decided. Now, we decide how we go and convert it to code. Converting to code is now no, no problem at all. We read in two numbers n 1 and n 2 okay. and you initialize your max and min by comparing these two numbers. If it is odd, you just read in one number and initialize max and min to that. A 
okay that is the first part and then what you do is or you could have just read the numbers pairwise say you read the numbers two at a time num 1 and num 2 and compare them. The larger one you put in a set large and the smaller one you put in a set small. This was exactly our tournament structure. You take the numbers pairwise, read them two at a time. Suppose it is even, read them two at a time, compare them. The winner you put in a set large, the loser you put in a set small. And then after you have read all the numbers, then find the maximum from this set large and find the minimum from this set small. So, this is how you can easily convert it into code. Any questions out here? So, let us see how the code will look like. Yeah. This is a quite a big uh, code, but let us see. <coughs> the, the following parts are there to the code. The main program in which I have declared n, the numbers to be read, m is a temporary variable, max and min are the temporary max and mins, i is the loop control, num1 and num2 as I mentioned, the pairwise numbers will be read. And I declared two arrays, large and small, of integers of size 100 each. These will be the array indices which I will use. So, first I read n and print it, and then odd and even case I separate out. <coughs> if I want to read, if I want to have even numbers, then I read in two. I am assuming here that we will always get more than two numbers. You could modify the program to get less than two. So, if it is odd, then I will read in only one number, say max and initialize max and min to this and make m is equal to n minus 1. And if it is even, I will read in another number and then I will swap, I will uh, read it, I just uh, read it into the first number I read into a variable max and I initialized min and max to be the same thing. The second I read into the variable min and if max is less than min, then I swapped the values of max and min and I decremented m by 1. That is saying that I have read in two numbers. So, now here is the main uh, loop which we were working out. Fill up the arrays large and small. I will read the two numbers pairwise. So, I will read i equal to 1 to m by 2 because if it was odd I had read in one number and made m equal to n minus 1. If it was even, I read in two numbers and made m equal to n minus 2. So, now I will read in only the rest of the numbers pairwise. So, this loop will go from i equal to 1 to i equal to m by 2 and I will read in two numbers num 1 and num 2. Okay? And then if num 1 is greater than or equal to num 2, then I will put num 1 in the array large and I will put num2 in the array small and after doing it, I will increment the indices here and increment the index here. Otherwise, that is if num1 is less than num2, then I will put num2 in large and num1 in small. So, this is fine and uh, just a bypass here. Uh, here, I had written index 1 and then incremented index 1. What I have done here is I have written index plus plus index 1 plus plus here and index 2 plus plus here. There is a then what does it mean? Does it uh, increment first here in this one? It must do large index equal to num2 and index 1 plus plus. This is equivalent to this in the sense that this index 1 plus plus is a statement which will return something. In C, every statement returns a value. So, index 1 plus plus 
first returns the value of index 1 and then increments. Therefore, it will work quite well in our scenario where we want large index equal to num2 and index to be index plus 1. So, the, you can also write the code this way. You could have there is another way plus plus index. We shall come to that plus plus index 1 means it will first increment and return the value. Therefore, if we had written plus 1 plus plus index 1, we would have first incremented and, and put it in the value at the next index. But what this means here is that we will first put at index 1 and then increment. You can have a look at your books to see the difference between index 1 plus plus and plus plus index 1. But the main idea is that if num1 is greater than num2, we put the larger in the uh, set large and the smaller in the set small. And once we have done that for all the elements, we then just uh, print the maximum and minimum by finding by calling two functions. One is maxi, which finds the maximum in the set large and mini, which finds the minimum in the set small. So, in maxi, I pass the array large, I pass the initial max which I had found by comparing one or two elements and I pass the total number of elements in the index. This is actually total number of elements plus 1 and in mini I pass the array small, I pass the current minimum which I had computed earlier and I pass the index 2 and we can this is the swap routine which we had seen earlier and this is the maxi routine. In the maxi routine, I have declared int, though this int was not necessary because it is not returning, oh it is returning the maximum. So, this int is sorry, this int is necessary. Maxi, this is the array which is to be passed, this is the initial maximum and this is the size of the array plus 1. Now, look in C language, in order to pass the array you have to just simply pass the array name. We shall come to array passing in more details later on, but this is just an introductory example in which to pass the array, you can just have to pass the array name and you have to declare that it is an array of integers, the size need not be given. Why? How it works? We shall come to later on and therefore, this is the format for the time being let us understand. There are other ways of doing it which we shall see later. And if you modify an array index inside here, the value will be modified, but uh, though we are not going to do that here in this example. So, we have declared an array and uh, what we have done is for i equal to 1 till i is less than index, we just computed the maximum of elements in the array ARR. Similarly, mini is identical to maxi except that it just finds the minimum by this and this one returns the max variable and this returns the min variable. So, this way we have computed the maximum of n numbers and the minimum of n numbers by two functions. So, after having uh, populated the arrays large and small as we discussed through the tournament mechanism, we Com, uh, combine these two and made it into uh, call these two functions and we printed the result of maximum and minimum. So, this is the algorithm that we obtain finally. So, this way we are going to get the correct program and the program is going to run uh, quite efficiently also. So, we have got a program which works efficiently and uh, something uh, which uh, has come out of a much more deeper analysis, but let us see uh, whether we can even improve this program like we improve the max 
program to get the maximum and then we improved it. So there is some post optimization which we can do at this point. Can anybody suggest what post optimization we are supposed to do? No, no. Very simply, when we populated these two arrays, large and small, we need not have put in the arrays. We could have kept a temporary max here and a temporary min here. And whenever we compare two numbers, the larger one we compare with the temporary max and the smaller one we compare with the temporary min. And we could have combined that maximum and minimum finding with this splitting up into these two sets into one shot. And if we did that together, we would not require these two arrays and we would have saved space. We would not have saved on number of comparisons anymore, but we would have definitely not required these two arrays at all. So we can get out of these two arrays by saying that when you compare num1 and num2, and then the larger one you compare with the max and update the value of max, and the smaller one you compare with the min and update the value of min. That way, you will not require these two arrays. With this simple modification, you will reach an algorithm which does not require any arrays anymore. Just let's have, I think it's quite clear, just have a look at what the program looks like. This read and initialize is the same thing. Up to here, we read in one or two numbers. And here, we compare two numbers, and I have written it in short. You compare two numbers and then if num1 is greater than num2, you swap num1 and num2. So once you swap num1 and num2, now you have got the larger in num1 and the smaller in num2. And now you say if num1 is greater than max, max equal to num1. If num2 is less than min, min equal to num2. But here you cannot put the else. Both of the things may simultaneously exist. So here you cannot put that if max num1 is greater than max, max equal to num1 else, that will make it wrong. Here you have to have both the statements. So now we have got rid of the array and uh, we have got a program in which we have combined the two phases together. So this is the post design phase in which you combine all your ideas together and see whether you can even optimize further. This program will work, but just for our personal comfort. So here, this program works with the swap. And well, you could have removed the swap also, because you could have put in this swap is an additional statement which will uh, exchange two numbers. Here you could have said if num1 is less than num2, you could have done this, else you could have done something else. That is else you could have compared num2 with max and num1 with min. That is the final thing that you could have done and uh, this is what you will end up with a final program in which all the other things remaining same, this part will change. If num1 is greater than equal to num2, then you compare num1 with max and num2 with min, else you compare num2 with max and num2 with, in, uh, num2 with max and num1 with min and you get rid of the swap statement as well. And finally, after doing all your analysis, this is where you can end up with a program which uh, is not only correct and efficient, but looks reasonably nice also. So this is how this is what we end up with and the whole idea behind this case study was to show that analysis of the problem from the beginning examining all the possible solutions is what data structuring, problem solving and programming is all about and that is what is absolutely necessary when you solve a problem. This was a very simple problem and it had so many issues involved. Therefore, when you come to a more involved problem you should always look at it with a fresh mind 
examine not only how you solved other problem, what you did for other problems, but how you could solve other problems in other ways to solve this problem better. That was what data structuring is about. Here, here look at data structuring. You compare two numbers and you just organized into two sets. So while finding out the maximum, you structured your data in such a way that finding out the minimum became easier. This is what data structuring is all about. And this is the first flavor of data structuring that we will have. And we will continue with such things in subsequent classes.